everybody, Clint Seeley here. Um, today I come to you to introduce something that I'm very excited about. Something that hopefully will blow your mind, okay? This last month I've had a lot of exciting things going on, going on in my life, especially the birth of my new daughter. So, and, and something else has been going on too, and you'll probably have noticed that there hasn't been a lot of new content added to the website. That's because my mind has been racing. My mind has been working on how to create something new and innovative, something that I believe is an industry first, something that will be exclusive to the passionstitch.com website members only. As an educator, I listen to y'all's feedback. I see the problems that we have when we're trying to design and create things. We spend, we get caught up spending so much time navigating through the layers of complexity, going from one program to another, trying to create wonderful designs. We run into problems like different file types, incompatibility amongst programs, and just creating steps and steps and layers of and layers of steps that we have to go through as designers just to create something great, to create something original. So my mind has been trying to think how could I create something? How could I bring something new to the table that would lower, eliminate the steps, lower those hurdles that my students have to jump over. That way they can spend most of their creative time just creating, making new exciting things, personal things. Now I'm not talking about a tool that'll allow you to just take a design somebody else created that you bought and and slightly edit it and then add some text to it. I'm, I'm talking about creating your own original stuff, personal stuff. Well, I got to thinking, and I came up with an idea, but I did not know how to do it. So I've been spending the last month figuring this thing out, and I come to you today with a finished sample product. I'm calling it, drum roll please, ding, digitizing elements what I'm going to do what I'm going to show you I believe is something you're familiar with but something a feature that has not been paid attention to not nearly enough in my opinion and certainly not something that has been utilized exactly for the digitizer and what that is is a true type font what I've done is I've created vector graphics and I've optimized them specifically for digitizing. With in mind, keeping in mind the tools that a digitizing program has, I then took those vector graphics and instead of uploading to them to my website in a Corel Draw format, a vector format, I, cre I turned them into a true type font or a ding font. I'm going to come up with a whole series of these fonts and I'm excited to come to you today to give you a introduction presentation of exactly how powerful full vector graphics saved as a true type font can be. Okay, so let's dive right into it. That way, I may be losing you a little bit, but that way if I show you visually, you're going to start to understand why I've done what I've done. So let's go ahead and load V7, and here we are. This is a graphic that I just, this is a design that I just created easily using a Ding font. But I used a Ding font that I created specifically for this program. Speci I created it in a way, and I'll show you, I created it in a way that you as a digitizer and maybe also a crafter, an individual that may work with several different programs creating your art, you can use 
inside all of those programs specifically in the digitizing program but if you also have say if you also have a silhouette cutting tool at home well you can use true type fonts but you can't use vectors in a silhouette cutting machine um, do do you also have design work software from Bernina where you're going to be creating cut work uh, crystal work and you're also going to be creating paint work well guess what you can use utilize true type fonts right inside that program as well as well as your word processing software Adobe Photoshop any any program that you might use that utilizes a true type font you're going to be able to use these designs okay this star happens to be one of them now you might be a little lost so just stick with me this is a design that I just created last night while I was testing out these this uh, sample font package so let me close this out I'm not gonna save it <clears throat> let's go over to the art canvas now on the art canvas you'll, you'll know that I've showed you ding fonts before these fonts that you can go uh, web dings or uh, dingbats you can go and download and install into your computer and there's all kinds of uh, funky shapes neat shapes and and design ideas that you can get using ding fonts however most of those fonts are all mashed together they're not created with the digitizer in mind let me show you an example one of the fonts here I'm over here on the insert character docker one of the fonts is uh, let's see what a good one would be the ding fonts Da -da 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 -da. okay here's a floral one okay and this will refresh in just a second there we go so here's a floral one let me go ahead and um, insert a floral design and see this is nice this is nice and a lot of these see how a lot of these edges are so jagged okay well this font this dingbat font was not uh, optimized the nodes were not optimized for digitizing so you get these rough edges okay even though the idea is good a lot of these elements are separate like this would be this element right here would be its own satin stitch element and so would this one and a lot of this is working for me but see how this entire element is running together well it would you can't edit it and make it look as pretty as you would want it to be this stem that runs well hold with me this stem that runs all the way down through the flower well it's connected to all these other elements so you can't give that stem its own individual look its own um, contour and satin stitch to where it looks like an actual stem it's just gonna blend together to all these leaves so we're really close with all these other Dean bat fonts but we're not where we need to be and that's what where the idea came to me Clint you need to create your own shapes that your students can use to make wonderful designs but these shapes need to be created in a way where they're one layer but they're not connected so once we import these shapes these ding fonts and we convert them to embroidery we still have full complete control over the entire design let me show you what I've come up with so I'll just delete that one away for this particular tutorial you're going to be able to download this true type font and install it into your computer and I call it digitizing elements sample one now this is important this is a sample so feel free to share it with your friends share it with anybody this particular video is going to be free and anybody can use these dingbat fonts so they can get excited about what I'm getting into here however all of the volumes theme volumes of fonts that I'm going to come out with monthly those will be exclusive to members only okay memberships membership does have its advantages so here I'm gonna select digitizing element sample one and the first real font now I have a lot of I've, I've dropped my logo you'll see I've dropped my logo all over the place I've just inserted that right from the character map now you're looking at this going Clint that's a vec that's a vector graphic that's right it is a vector graphic but we're bringing it into the program via the true type font it's a ding font but it is a vector there's a lot of programs that you might deal with that don't support vectors 
but they do support true type fonts. Well, true type fonts are vectors. So all those programs do have little vector engines in them. They just don't unlock all of the vector options for you to use. They want you to upgrade or you have to buy a more expensive version of the software. And then you have different types of vectors on top of that. Like you have Corel Draw, you have CMX, you have SVG. Okay, you have Adobe Illustrator. You got all kinds of different vectors and they might not all be compatible with all of those different programs. However, guess what? True type fonts can be brought in to all of those programs and played with. So this right here, this is my logo, but that's just a true type font. You're not going to want to play with this. That's just a, a, a kind of a placeholder type thing for all of the characters that I don't use. We'll get down here into the good stuff, okay? And this is just a sample pack. I've tried to put a, a sample of each theme that I'm going to design in the next few months. So I'm going to have a theme called like uh, the ocean or shells, where I'm going to have a whole library of, of things revolving around the ocean theme like uh, shells, starfish, maybe dolphins, whales, uh, like killer whales, boats. Okay, you, you get the idea. So it'll be a whole font full of those shapes. Let's import the first one. Here I've got like a scallop shape. Let me go ahead and insert that. Now look here. Again, you would think, Clint, this is a vector graphic. Well, it is. And when you... When you when you import, let me just recolor this to something a little prettier. When you import the ding font using the insert character map, look at here in the object manager, it imports it, boom, as a curve. So it's a vector. All right? Beautiful. If you zoom in here, you can see that I've optimized all of the edges. We don't have any of those rough edges, and I've minimized all of the nodes. So this shape is going to be able to be used. It should be able to be used in all of the, those other programs, and I'm going to give you an example of that in just a few minutes. But I want to show you what you can do here. All right, so here you'll notice that each one of these elements runs all the way down, but they don't connect to each other. That way I can take complete control. If all of these elements were connected in some way, it would still be pretty, but once we turn it into embroidery, we're going to have a flat image. It's going to be flat. It's not going to look good. All right, so let me go ahead and just click that guy and convert it to embroidery, and look what we have here. We have embroidery, but I should be able to because they're not attached, I should be able to select each individual element and I have full control over all of those elements. You see here, I can turn that element to a satin stitch. See how beautiful that satin stitch is? Maybe I wanna turn them all to a, well, my mouse is a little funky here. I'll select everything, turn them all to a satin stitch. That looks great. But hey, the you know, you're still digitizing here. You can see some of these stitch directions aren't perfect. Well, that's fine. If you change the stitch direction, you're only going to change the stitch direction for each individual element, so you still have complete control. Let me show you. This stitch direct this looks nice, but the stitch direction is not correct. So I would just select here, go down and grab my angle, my stitch direction angle, and boom, look at there. Now my stitch direction is perfect. Okay, I could do that for this one. Oh, what did I do? Uh-oh, Clint's getting ahead of him. I, I'm trying to go fast here. Okay, boom. See there? You could change the stitch direction for each individual one. These these elements could be turned to applique. All right? Let, let me show you something here. I could select everything, turn it all one color, and then decide, hey, I want to put a nice outline around it, a running stitch outline. Hey, hey, let's do that. No big deal. So let me go to maybe, what is it, the edit, outline design, We'll do a triple stitch outline in white, and you've just you've spiced it up a little bit. See, spiced it up a notch. That's real nice. And then we could put a little text over here. Maybe um, let's go to digitize uh, lettering, and I would just put beach. Oh, guess what lettering I'm in? I'm in digitizing elements, so I would need to change my font to a digitized font. I'm moving a little bit quick through this because I really want you guys, I want you gals to get an idea of what I can do. So let me get 
Well, there's one called Island here. I don't know what that's going to But maybe we type in, oop, Beach. And apply, OK, boom. So then we've got, maybe we're going to make a pillow and we want to put Beach on the pillow. Continuing with the outline uh, theme right there, maybe I do a little outline design once again, triple, and now we've got a design that looks really good. Okay, that, that could go, boom, you're done. You've created a design right there. That's a simple example. Let's get back to the other Ding fonts, and I'm going to show you some other examples. Go back to the art canvas. Let's get back into these. Let me, let me really show you how powerful Ding fonts are. This is a good example. I have a little starfish here. Now, the way that I created this starfish, let me show you. The way that I created this starfish is I wanted all these other elements, all these decoration elements to be in it. The, see these little holes right here? Well, I actually cut them out of the design itself, so there's transparent. And let me show you what I'm talking about. If I put a red background in here and let me layer it behind it so you can see what I'm talking about. You see how that shows through? And if I digitize this just the way that it is, the fabric would show through. And you're saying to me, Clint, that's not what I... I that, that, that starfish looks great, but I don't want the fabric showing through and all that. Exactly, and I know that. That's why I created it. With, with the program, the tools that the program has in mind, this is the way that I created it. Because the program is so powerful, we can digitize that star and then just add those elements right back in with the click of one button using the fill holes feature. Let me show you. So it's going to start off as transparent because I can't have all these separate elements in here and save it as a true type font. True type font has to be one flat layer. Hey, that's no problem. Let me click on this starfish and then I'll just convert that dude to embroidery. Let me show you. Hey, that looks nice. What if I want an outline? I want to now I want to start beefing up this uh, this starfish. I want not beefing it up, but kicking it up a notch. I want to make it look pretty. All right, it looks a little bit flat right now. This is the base. This is the foundation. Okay, this is a starting point. Now you get. Now you can spend your time digitizing instead of worrying about all this other stuff. Let me show you. Let's just play around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'll click on this guy and I want to out. I'm going to put an outline around the starfish, a satin stitch outline. That that would look nice, don't you agree? Hey, so let's go to edit. Let's use the outline design feature. But what I don't want to do because we have all these holes is I don't want a satin stitch outline around each one of these elements. Okay, so right now it says outline holes. I'm going to go ahead and click it so you see what I'm talking about. Let me hit, let me change it to satin stitch. Let me hit OK. And what it did, you see how it put a satin stitch outline around each one of these holes? Well, hey, that looks nice, but you're still going to have a little bit fabric showing through right there. And that may be what you want, but what if it's not? Let me hit undo. If I just want an outline around this guy, which is what I want. I'm going to hit Outline Design. This time, we would just unclick Outline Holes, and then we have an outline around the, the perimeter of the shape itself. Now, oop, now I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm clicked on the green element, and I'm going to fill the holes. Okay, have you used this feature very much? Well, when I fill holes, it's going to add these all these elements back. It's going to fill the holes with their each own individual element. So I didn't need to give you a vector graphic that has all those shapes because you can just reintroduce them with the click of one button anytime you want. It's easy. Watch this. So I'm going to hit fill holes and OK. Look, all those holes are filled. Now it filled them with green. And you're not going to want that. Hey, that's fine. Let me go ahead and I'm going to change this green. First of all, let's make this pretty. Change this green to blue. Now, what, what color do we want these individual holes? Let's say, just for example purposes, we'll turn them pink. And I can use the paint bucket and just hover over each one of those. And now we're going to reintroduce all of those elements. Okay. In a pink. Boom, 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 boom. And see, you're spending your time digitizing and making really nice looking stuff.
now you're saying to me clint well that's great but that's still not where i want to be well what else do you want to do if it was me all of these flat sh shapes here i want to give them a little bit of character so we're going to turn all those to satin stitches as well no problem go to your color film and i'm going to select all of these and we'll just go here turn them to satin stitch now we're starting to get we're starting to give this uh, design some character. We're starting to make her look really pretty. Now, another technique that you know that I like, I'm going to go ahead and outline all of these elements in maybe a, um, a running stitch. Let's see what that looks like. That's easy to do. Let's just outline design again. Just by layers of simple effects, just adding simple effects can really make your design look nice. We're going to move to a triple stitch this time. And let's hit OK. And look, hey, that really brightened things up. Now let's select this running, t this satin stitch outline here. Well, we can outline that one too. And maybe a triple stitch. And maybe we go with uh, purple. Let's outline that. Look at there. And now you've got something that looks really nice. Okay. <clears throat> and then remember what I started off with? Life is good. You could just add that text there, and there, there you got a design. Now you've made a, you've made a starfish that looks really nice. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, so let's move on. I'll get actually. Let me go back to the art canvas, and I'm going to show you some of these other characters that I have. I don't want to spend a ton of time explaining each individual one. I want you to kind of just get the point. I have a ladybug. That's nice. Hey, there's a ladybug. And as you know, once we digitize this ladybug, we just use the fill holes, and it's going to add your little dots right back to the ladybug automatically, and you got a ladybug. All right. What about... Um, I got a rainbow that looks really nice. It's a really cool one. Look at this rainbow. Now watch this. Because these elements are not connected, guess what? I have full control over each one. Let me convert that rainbow. I've converted that. Now you're saying, Clint, that looks flat. Well, hey, you're in control. You can do whatever you want. Let me show you. Let's turn this one maybe a pink, and we'll turn this one maybe a, uh, a purple. Let's slap, a, uh, let's slap an outline, a satin stitch outline. Let's do a white one. Just using the features of the program, we can really make, we can really start making this stuff look nice. Boom, that looks great. Hey, and then we could color each one of these individual, boom, rainbow stripes. Yeah, look at there. Yellow. You're saying to me, Clint, this, this is great. But can't you make it a look a little bit better than that? Oh, you know I can. You know I can. Let's just start turning these to a satin stitch. Hey, satin stitch. Hey, satin stitch. But Clint, what is going on with the, the satin stitch stitch angle? Well, hey, we've got... Remember all of these tools that we have in the program to make this design look perfect for you? Well, let me grab this first stripe. And do you know what feature we should be using to make this look just right? Add stitch angles. Right under the edit toolbox, boom, let me click add stitch angles, boom, boom, just like the runs of a ladder, okay? Just like a ladder. Now watch what happens when I press enter. Now it's a perfect satin stitch. And you could do the same thing for each individual one of these stripes, all right? And we, we could, we could, we could outline each one of these with a triple stitch. Just really, I mean, really get this thing going. Boom. Boom. Are you seeing how easy it is to do all of these things? Once you learn the features of the program, we can really start making some nice looking stuff. Look at that. These are, these are looking really nice. And I'm gonna have volumes and volumes of this type, this same type of thing. Let's go back to the art canvas. Let me show you another one. As you can tell, I'm really excited. Oh, hey, I got a little strawberry here. Let's look at the strawberry. And I'm going to show you the fill hole feature again. 
if you forgot, just in case you forgot, see all of these little holes right here that should be be, uh, should be seeds? Well, there's nothing there. They're see-through. But I digitized, I created it that way because I knew we could just bring them right back. Convert to embroidery. Now let's colorize this guy. I'll just click here, turn that guy green. Hey, right there we go. Let's go to the edit and let's fill them holes. Boom. All right. And then I'm going to turn these holes using the paint bucket. I'm going to turn them all black. Boom, 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 boom. Look at here. Turn those all black. And then I can go select those and just turn those to uh, satin stitch. And hey, we're... Now we're cooking with gas. I can slap an outline, uh, maybe a satin stitch outline on this guy. Turn that one uh, green. And that's just going to kind of round out the design there. Hey, take this one, outline design. I, don't, I do not want to outline the holes because there's going to be a bunch of little holes in here. So I undo that one, turn this one maybe red. Hey, there we go. And now we're, now we're looking sharp. Now here's another important feature. Say you want to use one of my shapes, like so, and you've created a nice little design, and you want to turn it to applique. Here's a reason, here's another reason why this is so important. You want to do an applique, or maybe you want to turn a, a part of it into crystal work, or maybe you want to turn a part of it into cut work, or um, paint work. You can do that because these are true type fonts. We can load those, excuse me, we can load those other programs and just bring these shapes right here. All of these shapes that we're playing with, we can bring those in as true type fonts. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to take a little break and I'm going to record another video and we're going to put the videos together when I, when I uh, render the videos. So it'll be fairly seamless. But say we want to create the, this starfish or this, um, actually undo here. I want the berry part to be an applique fabric. Well, I can click on this guy here or maybe the stem part. Let me undo again, take the outline. I can click on this, this stem part right here. And then we can go, where is it, under the digitize. I can left click applique, hit enter, and I've turned that element to applique. Now, this, oops, this is applique, but now what do you have to do? How, do you, how are you going to cut out your fabric shape? Well, you would either need to print it out on a piece of paper, spray adhesive it to your fabric, and cut it out, or you could send it to your cutting tool and go through all of these different steps and layers of. Uh, save a JPEG and then import it and trace it, snip it, trace it again and resize it and all that jazz just to get it to your cutting tool. Well, no longer do you have to do that when you're using my digitizing elements. No, 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 no. I'm going to shut this part down and then I'm going to bounce between a few other programs so you can really see what I'm talking about. So, let me stop this now and then I'm going to move on. Okay, ladies, so here we are. Um, as I was discussing uh, just a few minutes ago, you may, be, um, you may have several different programs. You may have several different tools, things that you use to create your art. Okay, one of those things, one of the things that I really got into is this. I bought one of these uh, Cameo uh, Silhouettes uh, cutting machines, and I really like it. However, the software, as powerful as it is, it's a little limited on uh, vector graphics. The uh, basic level doesn't handle vector graphics at all, but then if you upgrade uh, to the higher level of, of Silhouette Studio, you can actually import SVG graphics. Well, here's the thing. When we create something in V7, we can't export as an SVG graphic. So it's really incompatible. So you have to really get creative and add all of these steps to be able to take your designs from V7 and get them and make them into cut shapes that Silhouette Studio will recognize. Well, hey, 
I know what you're thinking and I know what you've been told. You really can't do vector graphics inside Silhouette Studio. Oh, but if you bring them in as vector graphics, ho ho ho, yes you can. Now you'll notice that I played, just a few minutes ago, I played around with that starfish and I played around with the, um, the strawberry. We'll use those in example. Well, the one thing that Silhouette Studio can do, can completely do, as far as cutting out paper shapes, vinyl stickers, and more importantly, cutting out pieces of fabric right on that machine, it can, it can do any true type shape that you bring into the program, even though it doesn't want to do a vector graphic. It kind of limits you in that regard. Well, hey, you've already installed my digitizing elements as a true type font. So guess what? You can bring those dudes right into this program and get to cutting. Say we've um, created something with the starfish or the strawberry and that dude is four or five inches tall. You remember exactly the size of the starfish and you want to turn that into an applique and just get busy cutting out those applique shapes. Well, hey, here we go. You're, if, if you have the software, you're completely familiar with where I'm at. And I'm just going to go here to uh, the text side of it. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to scroll down until I find my digitizing element. Yeah? Where are we at? Where are you digitizing elements? There we go. Digitizing elements. And I'm going to click the left click the lettering tool and just click right here on the background. Now I'm going to turn this to maybe 288 points so it's nice and large. And then we're going to do what a... Uh, we're just going to type out B on the keyboard. Hey, there you go. B, C, D... You see my shapes? These are all true type shapes, but they are still vectors. So you're going to get nice clean cuts. Say we wanted to do that strawberry. Here we go. Strawberry. Done. I'm just going to grab that dude. I'm going to grab it. Well, let me delete this and just, just retype this in. What was that? The D? Yeah, just retype that in. And I'm going to reshape this strawberry to whatever its size it was. Was it four or five inches tall? Say, say we created the design in V7 and the, the strawberry was five inches tall. I'll just drag this. You're seeing right there, right until where we get to five inches. Maybe you want it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so just a little bit bigger than five inches for overlap. But there you go. There's the strawberry. It's done. I mean, it's done. It's ready to cut because you're bringing it in as a true type. So it'll cut out whatever you want. Say this entire thing was an applique and you, you're wanting to turn that strawberry into an applique, there you go. That's ready to send right to the printer. Now the next one that I'm going to show you is we're going to get into, uh, I'm going to show you how to bring in these shapes, these true type font shapes, my digitizing elements into another program. Okay? So hold on just a second. Okay, ladies, so here we are in Bernina Design Works. Say you're wanting to do an applique shape and you don't have the, uh, the, the Cameo, the Silhouette Cameo, but you do have a cut work tool on your machine and you also own Bernina Design Works. Maybe you play around in Design Works. Well, from this program, as you know, you can do a cut work shape, you can, do a, uh, you can make crystal work shapes, and you can make uh, the paint work shapes. Primarily, the one that I use the most is the cut work. So you can easily, we can insert our true type font right onto this canvas and turn it to a cut work shape let me show you so we would just start off with a blank canvas and then right up here i believe under tools we we have right here we have an insert symbol tool and it's going to insert uh any symbol from a web ding font that you want and i'm just going to click the the little drop down menu and here we can see digitizing elements and now you can see my shapes look at that because it's a true type font it loads automatically when you load any program that utilizes true type fonts. You don't have to install it into any each program. It's done. You install one time and it's done. So here we go. Here's the uh, maybe we wanted to cut out. This time we created something with the uh, um, this flower here that I have. Okay, this Hawaiian flower. Let's insert that guy. Let me hit uh, insert and then just draw him into existence and there we go there is let me close that out there is my flower 
And remember, this is just an, it's a web ding font, so that the program's treating it as a font, but it's really a vector graphic. So I believe from here all that I would do, what, from here I would just go here and turn it into a cut work. Boom. It's a cut work. So now it's a cut work, and you can export this as a cut work file. You just resize it to the size that you created your applique for, and then you can cut this dude out. Any of my shapes, you can handle them this way. Bring them right in using the true type feature. Okay, so that shows you exactly how easy it is to use my digitizing elements amongst all the programs that you may be using on a daily basis. And we just really, what we're really trying to do is make things simple and eliminate steps. Now correct me if I'm wrong and leave, leave a comment in the comment sections, please. I really, I'm really uh, concerned about y'all's feedback. Let me know if you've ever seen anything like this before that's been specifically created for digitizers. This is Clint Seeley, and thank you for watching.